The following is a special presentation from the WTNS Sports Department. The following is a special presentation from the WTNS Sports Department. It's now time for high school basketball here on the Sports Voice of East Central Ohio, WTNS. Coming up, we'll have all the information on the pregame show. Plus, coming up, Coach's Corner with WTNS sports announcer Steve Corey. It's right here on the Sports Voice of East Central Ohio, WTNS. Jamie from the Coshocton Coffee Connection. Did you know that we serve breakfast sandwiches all day, every day? Our made to order breakfast sandwiches include a fresh egg, melted cheese, and your choice of biscuit, bagel, croissant, or my favorite, onion flatbread. Next, choose from sausage or locally purchased bacon. Enjoy that same bacon for lunch on our BLTs, grilled cheese, and turkey bacon clubs. Pair any of our sandwiches with a hot, made fresh daily bowl of soup. Let us complete your order by making you a specialty coffee or tea. Stop by and see us at the Coshocton Coffee Connection. Coach's Corner is brought to you by the Inslee Insurance Agency. For auto, home, business, and life insurance, call 740-622-1111. That's the Inslee Insurance Agency, 433 Walnut Street, Coshocton. The Inslee Agency is proud to be a part of this high school sports broadcast. We support the student athletes on the team and the students in all extracurricular activities. Hi, I'm Todd Inslee. In fact, your good student may qualify for discounted auto insurance rates. We can provide you with homeowners insurance and life insurance from Auto Owners Insurance. Insure both of us and save even more. For a no-obligation quote on auto, homeowners, or life insurance from Auto Owners Insurance, call the Inslee Agency at 622-1111. My guest on Coach's Corner, Kirk Kaufman, the head coach of the Tri-Valley Lady Dogs, and want to talk, first of all, congratulations on two tournament wins right now. Kind of go over the last tournament win. We saw you against Riverview. I thought you really played well. Your freshman stepped up and played really well that night. How did the second one go? We weren't able to cover that. Well, our second game, uh, we did not shoot the ball very well at all. Um, and a lot of credit goes to Indian Valley. They were physical, uh, maybe one of the most physical teams we saw all year. And uh, we just did not get our feet under us. We did not shoot the ball in rhythm the first half, um, which I don't think was a bad thing for us. Um, we had to come out and we had to play the second half and, and earn that game. And, and our girls did to, the cre to their credit. So... Um, it was definitely uh, an opportunity to learn and grow and hopefully make us better. All right. You know, I wanted to talk a little bit about your senior leadership. You know, we have, we've had done a few games now, and I really haven't touched on that, and I usually like to because that's so important, I think, especially when you have some younger kids. And kind of talk about uh, Jamie McLaughlin comes up, comes to mind. I'm going to go over what they've meant to your team. It, it's funny you say that because we're at our, our walkthrough before we got on the bus today, and, you know, I'm – I'm saying this and that and frustrated about this. And, you know, they just know how to handle me. Um, but they are they are natural leaders. Um, our girls look up to them. Um, and, and I think this team more than uh, – I mean, they, they just know how to handle adversity. Uh, they don't get uh, rattled when, when adversity strikes. They, they step up to the challenge, and, and, and that goes – I mean, that's to their credit. They're just competitors, but also keep things in perspective. All right. Now let's move on tonight. It's Philo. Or you're at a neutral site for the first time. And, uh, you know, a, a team that you've seen twice already, won both ball games. Uh, you're kind of a little bit like me. That third game, you just want to get get to it and get through it. And right. Kind of tell, tell us about the Philo team. Well, you know, I think we talked before we played Riverview. You know, the third time you play someone, there's not a whole lot of secrets out there. Um, you know them. Uh, they know you. I mean, you got two films on them, so you know what they're going to do against you and, you know, vice versa. So um, I, I think it just comes down to you got to be ready to do what you do and do it well. And that's kind of what we've stressed with our kids. And, 
and, and hopefully that's the case tonight. All right, keys to the victory. What do you need to do? Well, you know, I assume we're going to see some zone, um, so we've got to move the ball. We've got to get inside touches against that zone. Um, that, that sets up our outside shots. Of course, you want to push the ball anytime you see a zone, and, we, and that's one of our strengths. We want to push the basket. And then, you know, last game, we did not shoot the ball well the first half, but our defense kept us in there, and that's kind of a stalwart in our program. We've got to continue to play good, solid defense and give ourselves a chance. All right. You know, the other thing I wanted to touch base with you a little bit on is, um, and, and you've done it in the games we've done, but I thought your your full court pressure, you really came out and attacked uh, with that. Is that something we can expect tonight, or is that just you're going to see how the flow goes? Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things about this team is we're able to play a number of different ways. Uh, you know, it, sometimes we press, sometimes we're a half-court man team, sometimes we play a half-court zone. We can adjust to a lot of different things. And so, you know, based on the flow of the game, that's a possibility. Uh, you know, we'll see how they're handling what we're doing. All right. Health of the ball club. As good as it can be at this time of year, right? I'm just going to tape that that's one. That's right. <laughs> All right, I appreciate your time. That's Kurt Kaufman. Good luck here this evening. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be back with the pregame. This is High School Girls Basketball on WTNS, Coshocton. Coach's Corner has been brought to you by the Inslee Insurance Agency, 433 Walnut Street in Coshocton. Call the Inslee Insurance Agency at 740-622-1111 or go to InsleeAgency.com. If you own a farm, you know that a one-size-fits-all insurance policy isn't a smart way to do business. I'm John Ionello, your American National Insurance Agent in Coshocton, Holmes, and surrounding counties. American National can provide you with a flexible farm package that allows you to customize a policy to match your individual needs. Call me at 740-295-9460 because while you know your business, we know how to help insure it. Coshocton Dentistry offers professional, state-of-the-art dental care in a small-town practice. Doctors Brian Dunlap and Patrick Lopper and their entire team are dedicated to educating you with the help of digital technology to give personalized dental care that you deserve. Their goal is to simply help their patients keep all their teeth for a lifetime in maximum comfort, function, and aesthetics. Coshocton Dentistry is currently accepting new patients. To schedule your appointment with the local professionals at Coshocton Dentistry, give them a call at 740-622-5774 or stop by 448 Main Street in Coshocton. Visit their website, coshoctondentistry.com. Do you need health care without the wait? Muskingum Valley Health Center's Urgent Care is now open to serve all residents in Coshocton and surrounding counties. From feeling under the weather to a sprained ankle, MVHC Urgent Care is here for all of your urgent health care needs. Simply walk in and be seen seven days a week at the new MVHC Urgent Care located at 235 Kenwood Drive in Coshocton, directly across from Jeff Drennan Ford. MVHC Urgent Care, health care without the wait. And hello, everyone. I'm Steve Corey, along with Stephanie Snyder, and we're at Maysville. It's Tri-Valley Lady Dogs against the Philo Lady Electrics here this evening in the, in the semifinal district match. I want to tell you how they got here. Tri-Valley moved here by defeating Indian Valley. It actually beat Riverview early, then they defeated Indian Valley. Philo defeated Lisbon Beaver Local, and that sets up this matchup. In the other semifinal match, it'll be Indian Creek up against Zanesville, also playing at this particular time. We'll get back and get to the starting lineups in a moment. This is High School Girls Tournament Basketball on WTNS, Coshocton. I'm Stacy Rice from Coshocton Collision Center. Winter driving can be hazardous, so be careful when you drive and the weather turns bad. If you have an accident, come to Kashok Inclusion Center. We use the latest environmentally friendly paint products from PPG. We put you the customer first by using these products to preserve our environment. We complete auto body repairs as promised, offer free computerized estimates, and guarantee our work. 
For all your body repair needs, come to Coshocton Inclusion Center, 225 Main Street in Town Center, Coshocton. Across from Wilson's Carpet and Furniture or call 623-7347. To stay as warm as possible, you add an extra layer. It's the same when it comes to your windows. MRV Siding Supply has Provia triple pane windows, providing an extra layer of insulation. MRV Siding Supply also has Provia Signet fiberglass doors with a foam-filled solid core Energy Star rated. MRV Siding Supply, Millersburg, Newark, and Pittsburgh, PA. Call 800-524-7436. Get your siding supplies from the siding guys. MRV Siding Supply. At Village Motors, we take great pride in our product, and we have two new models in stock that we're very excited about. Hi, this is Deke Miller, and the full-size Ford Bronco has finally arrived. It is built Ford tough, and it just screams Bronco when you look at it. The Jeep Wrangler will now have a great competitor for years to come. It is the real deal, and you need to see it and drive it for yourself. Also, the Grand Cherokee Extended Length L model has arrived. The first third seat option for the Grand Cherokee, it combines luxury and off-road capability with the ability to carry seven passengers. Stop out soon to see the Bronco and the Grand Cherokee L at Village Motors in Millersburg. The Coshocton Opportunity School has the highest graduation rate out of 86 similar programs in the state of Ohio and is rated as exceeds standards in all areas of graduation. They have a combined administrative experience of 55 years and combined teaching experience of 127 years. They offer a state-required core curriculum, a career-based instruction program, and several electives including art, life skills, parenting, and relationship building. Please call 740-622-3600 if you are interested in applying. Any day is a great day for lunch or dinner at the Warehouse Steak and Stein. They have half-price appetizers every Monday through Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. And don't forget about their daily specials. Every Monday they feature their wings. It's half-price burgers on Tuesday. And Thursday stop in for their delicious tender prime rib. Plus don't forget their weekend entertainment. They are Comedy Central every second and fourth Saturdays now through April. So stop in and relax, enjoy some great food, and take a break from winter. The Warehouse Steak and Stein, located in a historic Roscoe Village. And if you'd like to do carryout, call the warehouse at 740-622-4001. A locally owned family business offering a full line of ag diesel, lubricants, and gasoline. You can't go wrong with, with the right fuel. Now with the starting lineups for us, here's Stephanie Snyder. Thanks, Dad. We'll get started this evening with the visitors. The Philo Lady Electrics will start junior, number zero, Olivia Dement. Sophomore, number two, Bailey Dement. Senior, number 12, Gage Lee Shook. Sophomore, number 32, Caitlin Rose. And senior, number 34, Zoe Dodson. The home team for this evening's game will be the Tri-Valley Lady Scotties. They'll start junior, number three, Lexi Howe. Senior number five, Janie McLaughlin. Senior number 23, Kendall Boffman. Senior number 24, Anna Krupa. And freshman number 31, Mackenzie Harvey. The starting lineup has been brought to you by R.J. Wright & Sons, an industry leader in providing complete residential and commercial fuel needs. R.J. Wright & Sons has locations in New Comerstown, New Philadelphia, and Caldwell. Coaches in the ballgame, Dan Hildy, the head coach down at Philo. They come in with a record of 12 and 11 on the season. Kurt Kaufman at, down at Tri-Valley. The Lady Dogs come in with a record of 22 and 2 on the season. Lady Dogs really haven't been tested in their first two games, Steph. And uh, Philo, a, a team that they beat uh, pretty handily both times this year, It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, having the opportunity to see them play against Riverview the first round of the tournament, seeing what they could do defensively. I know Coach Coffin mentioned on Coach's Corner they didn't shoot so well in the first half against Indian Valley, but their defense is what carried them. I look for them to get off to a good start defensively as well because that's something that's standard practice at Tri-Valley. So I'm anxious to see offensively how both teams fare this evening. Nice crowd on hand. Both teams have hit the center circle. Jumping will be Janie McLaughlin against number 32. Uh, the jumping will be Caitlin Rose. Ball's in play, and it's controlled by Tri-Valley. Lexi Howe has the basketball. Hasn't crossed the timeline yet. Half-court trap, and she throws it away. Turns it over. First turnover of the game. Coming up with a steal is Bailey DeMent. She brings it herself quickly down, backs it out. 
And she'll reset the offense. DeMent picks up the dribble, hands the basketball off to Harper. Harper dribbles out front, guarded by Howe. Now she's cut off, spin move. Now hands the ball, well, doesn't play yet. Now in trouble, ball's deflected away and stolen away by Howe. Howe was ahead of the pack and lays it in. So a steal and a basket for Lexi Howe. It's 2-0 Tri-Valley. DeMent will bring it across the timeline for the Lady Electrics. Works it down, give and go, goes high post, lays a shot up and missed. But a good give and go pass and heading to the free throw line will be number 34, and that is Zoe Dodson. So Dodson at the line. She'll be shooting a pair. They're waiting for Howe to tie her shoelaces. Now we're ready to go. First throw on the way on the rim and rolls off. So she'll try to split the pair. Just underway from Maysville. It's Philo and Tri Valley. Three throw on the way and missed again, but rebounded by Philo. And they put it back up and in. Grabbing that offensive board was Caitlin Rose. She gets her first basket. We're tied at two. Howe has the basketball. Gives it off to Harvey. Harvey double team now works down into the corner. Skip pass out to Howe. Back out front to Harvey. She's going to let a triple go. Back iron no good. Ball on the deck and out of bounds to Tri-Valley. Both players scrambling for the basketball, but Tri-Valley will maintain possession. Get it into Howe. 2-2 two, two or a score, 6-48 in the first quarter. Back out front it goes with the basketballs. Kendall Boffman back to Howe. Boffman. Left side to Harvey. Harvey looking against the zone. Howe thought about it. Now to Harvey to Boffman. Boffman working across. Now looking out front. Harvey skip past the Howe. She's going to let a triple go from the wing, and he buries it. Lexi Howe with the first five points. It's 5-2, 6-20 to play opening quarter. Slowly across the timeline is going to be DeMent. DeMent working down the left side, picks up her dribble and gives it to, to, to DeMent as well. And then she turns it over, be turnover number two for Philo. So it'll be Tri-Valley basketball on the side, far sideline. 5-2, to 6-10 to play here in the opening quarter. Howe gets to Krupa, crosses the timeline to McLaughlin, back out front to Harvey. Harvey works right side to Boffman. Boffman looking inside, now goes to Krupa high on that top of the key. Right side it goes to Boffman, down to Harvey. Harvey looking, back out front to Boffman, just working the perimeter. 2-3 zone being played by Philo. Just working it side to side right now, and out to Harvey. Looking inside to McLaughlin, that's where they go. Squares up, skip pass out. There's a three ball from the wing. Back iron, no good by Boffman. But there's Howe with the rebound and the stick back. So Lexi Howe off to a good start with seven first quarter points. It's 7 2, 5 28 to play first quarter. With a basketball, Bailey DeMent has it. Now dribbles towards the right wing, now back out front. Gives the basketball off to Harper. Harper goes back to, to, gives to Olivia DeMent. Now to Bailey DeMent. They were just working out front. Crosses over, tries to get inside, but Boffman cuts her off. Now once again, a lot of dribbling. The clock and ball once again stolen by, or tried to steal by Howe. She comes up with it, sets it up, gives it to McLaughlin. She powers inside, and she'll go at the line to shoot a couple. Another nice effort by Lexi Howe gets the steal and also nice pass off to McLaughlin who will shoot a pair. 7 to 2, 455 in the opening quarter. Her first free throws long, no good. Checking in will be Leah Shook. Also getting in, I believe. Number 22, that's Bussy. So she misses both free throws, and with the basketball is DeMent. Then across the timeline, works left wing, where the basketball is going to be Bussy. Bussy dribbling, almost lost it. Good solid defense, gets it out top. It's right to go the opposite way. DeMent runs it down into the corner to Bussy. Bussy picks it up. High low, there's a shot from the wing. Back iron, no good, and ball's deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with. Philo, shot was missed by number 34, 
Zoe Dodson. So Dodson will trigger in. Looking, goes all the way out, front, almost stole it away. DeMent has it, goes in, scoop shots, no good. Howe rebounds, has the ball stripped, but she comes up with it. Quickly the other way, down in the corner to Harvey, dumps it down low to McLaughlin, and she throws it away. It's coming up with a steal. Is going to be DeMent, Olivia DeMent, goes into the corner, backs it out. She'll reset the offense, a little spin move, but she's cut off. Trying to get the basketball, ball out there, another steal for Howe. It's... Takes it herself, stops, puts a shot up, missed it. Ball's batted around. She gets her own rebound and is fouled as she goes back up. So right now, Lexi Howe just doing a little bit of everything. The Warehouse Stakenstein is proud to sponsor tonight's player of the game. Tonight's player of the game will receive a gift certificate for a famous Warehouse cheeseburger and order of their legendary onion rings. This is courtesy of Warehouse Stakenstein in Roscoe Village. First throw by Howe's right through. She has all eight. It's eight to two, 358 here. Couple players getting in. Liddick will check in. Also getting in for Tri Valley. Looks like PD Moore will be in, number two. So Howe will try to get the back end as well. Her throws up and right through. Lexi Howe with all nine, nine two, 355, and quickly the other way. Dumps it down low, missed the layup was number 32, Rose, and rebound comes down to McLaughlin. She gets it off to Howe. 9 to 2, 345, skip pass into the corner. There's going to be a wide open three ball for the wing and right through for Anna Krupa. So Anna Krupa buries the triple and a timeout on the floor with 339 to play, 12 to 2. Tri Valley with the lead and we'll stay right here. This game is brought to you in part by Given Dawson Paisley Funeral Home, where they offer their services with compassion, care, dignity, and over 70 years of tradition. You can trust Given Dawson Paisley Funeral Home now and in the future. Well, just like we talked about in the pregame, mentioning the fact that Tri-Valley is going to try to put on that stifling defense they do. They do a nice job of getting in the passing lane. Several of the turnovers that have been forced have been because of trying to reverse the ball or just being overly aggressive defensively. And so, like you said, I mean, Lexi Howe has just about all the points at this point in the game I believe and so you know she's working overtime to try to get these shots and people are you know they're working the ball pretty well but with her aggressiveness defensively she's been able to force some turnovers which has gotten some layups for Tri-Valley. Now first look we see here now is Tri-Valley's coming out in full court pressure they get the basketball in with the basketball is Olivia DeMent works right side to Rose Rose all the way across the floor and they get it in back to DeMent DeMent works to the center of the floor now tries to penetrate Throws a shot up, it's taken away, and quickly ahead it goes to, oh, beautiful pass to Krupa, and gets that to Lexi Howe to Anna Krupa, gets the basket, and it's all of a sudden a 14-2 lead. Good ball movement by Tri Valley. Quickly the other way is DeMent, she loses it, and coming up with it is a host of people. We've got a bunch of people hitting the floor, so it'll be a foul on Philo. Picking up that personal foul will be Bailey Dement, or Demet, I guess. We'll learn. Checking back will be Olivia Demet. And Howe steps into a long triple, no good. Ball's rebounded by Krupa, gets it back out to Howe. She's going to try it again and hits it. <laughs> so Lexi Howe with a monster first quarter. It's now 17 to two, Tri-Valley. With the basketball dribbling right side is going to be Dement. Now they work in it. Out front with the ball now. Number 20 is going to be Wilson who checked in. Just working around the perimeter. Trying to penetrate all the way to the hole. Missed the layup, but a follow-up is no good. And we've got a tie-up as Lytics tied up. Missing the original shot was number 12, Harper. Grabbing the rebound was Bussy and missed it as well. But the tie-up will... Get maintain possession for Philo. Full court pressure. They try to get it in. Looking, look, finally do. Out front with the basketball, working it down in the post area. Skip pass out. There's a three ball from the wing. And the shot is no good by Harper. And rebound comes down to Tri Valley. Quickly ahead to Liddick. Liddick has it. Goes back out front. Just 
Boff now down in the corner. They stepped into a three ball. It's going to be long, no good. Littick rebounds it, has the ball deflected out of bounds. It'll stay. No, it's going to be off Littick, so it'll be a turnover for Tri-Valley. There's third compared to five to Philo. 17-2 with 1.57 to play here in the first quarter. Trying to get the ball up the court. It's going to be Harper. Harper gets it over to Demont. Demont. Now Trapp is still dribbling through and dumps it down low. Puts the shot up. No good. But drawing the foul and heading to the free throw line will be number 33, and that's Tegan Day. So Tegan Day at the line to shoot two. First throw by Day rattles home. It's her first point. 17 to three. Drive Alley out in front. Second throw on the way, that's good as well. Hits them both. 17 to four, 140 to play here. Trapping half court pressure. They get it across to Boffman. Boffman picks up her dribble and gets it out to Harvey. Now into the corner to Krupa. Krupa back out to Boffman. Skip pass over to Howe. Howe looking at the defense. Skip pass over to Boffman. Boffman looking inside. Nothing there. Now back into the corner. A little baseline jumper is going to be good for Anna Krupa. So Krupa gets her seventh point. And it's now 19 to 4 with 112 to play here in the opening quarter. Demet across the timeline, gets the basketball off to Day. Day, back it goes to over to number 12, Harper. Now ball stolen away, turnover, ahead it goes to Harvey. Harvey dumps it to Howe who lays it in. Good basketball and Lexi Howe with another hoop. And it's now a 21 to four score. With a basketball, Demet guarded out front by Krupa. Dribbles all the way in, almost stolen away. Ball stumbled and does get away from Philo. So turnover number seven. 21 to four with 38 seconds to go here in the first quarter. How looks cross goes all the way across to How now down into the corner. Skip pass out to Harvey. She's going to step into a triple. That shot's wide right. Rebound comes down to Philo's number 11. Shook, Shook rebounds it, gets the basketball off. There's a shot from the wing, back shot, bank shot, no good by Day, and rebound comes to Harvey, quickly the other way to Krupa. Krupa with nine seconds, hands it to Harvey, she pulls up, little baseline jumper, missed it, no good, ball's tipped, rebound Krupa, they're gonna have to go quickly. And she lets it go at the buzzer, wide right, that's the end of the first quarter, so after one, Tri Valley out in front of Philo by a score of 21 to four. We'll be back for the second period. This is high school ba girls basketball, WTNS, Coshocton. Life is full of uncertainties. What happens to your assets after you pass away shouldn't be one of them. At Raymond James Financial Services, we offer a transfer on death agreement that allows your estate to be held in a brokerage account. So it avoids the probate process and goes directly to your heirs. To find out how to make things easier for your loved ones, call financial advisor Shane Pyle at 622-3110, located in Coshocton. Raymond James Financial Services, member FINRA CIFIC. Life well planned. This guy has a mattress on the roof of his car. She's putting on makeup while she's driving. Turn signals, people. It's not you, it's them. But your independent insurance agent has you covered. They'll help you choose the Grange Auto coverage you want for your unique needs. You can't choose who's on the road, but you can choose the right protection for the way they drive. Call Albertson Insurance at 740-622-0572. Policy and coverage not available in all states. Well, a fast start for Tri Valley as they put 21 on the board in the first quarter, led by Lexi House, 14 points. Santa Krupa had seven, the only two players to score for Tri Valley. The lady, lady Dogs have it coming out. McLaughlin has the basketball to Krupa, over goes to Howe, which works the perimeter with the basketball in the corner. Is going to be number 11, Dinan, who checked in. Now to working it out for now. No, quick pass out to Howe, is off the dribble, stops, gets it back out, working the perimeter down to McLaughlin. 
in the corner. Now she goes out front with the basketball. Boffman just working the perimeter. Handing it off is going to be Dinan. Just back and forth they go. Boffman looking. Gives the ball to McLaughlin. High post area. Takes a dribble to Howe. Howe off the dribble. Penetrates inside. Tried to dump it down. Had it stolen away. Heading the other way is going to be Philo. Putting the shot up and drawing the foul is going to be Aaliyah Bussey. And she'll go at the line to shoot two free throws. So she'll be the third lady electric to the line tonight. But this will be her first time. So Bussey at the free throw line. Looking for her first point. First free throws right through. Checking in for and second one's no good. Ball's out of bounds and two Tri Valley. Bailey Dement back in for the electrics. Lexi Howell walking across the timeline. Down the right side, picks up a dribble out front to Krupa. Krupa left wing, just working the perimeter to Lydic. Now to Dinan. Basket PD Moore, she's going to take a long three. That's no good, but McLaughlin runs it down for the offensive rebound. Takes the foul line, steps through, a little scoop shot, no call, and rebound comes down to Philo's number 32, Caitlin Rose. Rose rebounds, hands it off to Demon. Demon brings it across the timeline, hands the basketball off to number 20, who I don't have right now. Ball is almost thrown away. McLaughlin will pick up the personal foul. Kennedy Rinkus in the ball game's number 20. So with the basketball, Philo looking to trigger in, dump it down low, little scoop shot. Oh, goes over the top of the backboard, so it'll be out of bounds too. The Lady Dogs, they lead it 21 to five here, 6.22 to play in the opening half. Handing it off to Dinan, now with the basketballs, Howe, just working the perimeter to Karupa, all the way across to Boffman. Now just back and forth. Group tries to get to the hoop, puts shot up, no good. Rebound comes down to number 34, Zoe Dodson. Dodson brings it herself across the timeline. Hands it off, trying to penetrate all the way to the basket. Scoop shots, no, no good by Harper. And rebound comes down to, to uh, Howe. And then they dump it inside to McLaughlin. Spin move, gets it out, has it stolen away. Turnover for Tri-Valley will be their fifth. Quickly the other way is Philo. Lady Electric's trying to get the baseline, but cut off nicely. Now they dump it down low. Little pass outside, ball's on the deck, stolen away by McLaughlin, and Chin Chi almost turns it over. And it'll be Tri-Valley basketball after the timeout. Be a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. When buying or selling real estate, you want an agent you can trust. Find that agent in Carla Norris from HER Realtors Coshocton office. Carla makes home buying a hassle free process for her clients. Call Carla at 740 502 1881. So Philo's had some opportunities here in this quarter. You know, there's only they've only scored five points, but they've had an opportunity to kind of move the ball and get the ball inside. They've been trying to get these scoop shots because Tri Valley's defense is, is very well done, and so they're just trying to get anything they can. And some of their shots going up, not falling, and then um, Tri Valley's able to get that rebound and get it down the floor. So it looks. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, I think they anticipate the pressure, and really, it's not as as hard as you would think, but I just think that reputation uh, plays a part of it. With the basketball is Tri-Valley. McLaughlin out, has the basketball out top. He all dumps it down to Harvey. Harvey skips it back out front. Now to McLaughlin at the foul line. Gives it off to Howe. Howe goes left side to, goes left side to Harvey. And now back to Howe. Now to McLaughlin just working the perimeter. Hands it to Harvey. Has a wide open shot. Her shot is good. Fits her first basket. Mackenzie Harvey and... 
And now Philo wants a timeout. Score is 23 to 5. It's a full timeout, so we'll break away and be back. This is High School Girls Basketball on WTNS, Coshocton. Start spring by beating the rush and stopping in to Jeff Drennan Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. This is General Sales Manager Craig Abner. We just received the hardest to find low mile vehicles between seventeen and twenty three thousand dollars. From SUVs to sedans, we have them all in your price range, and they won't last long. We have the most desirable vehicles all in one location. So stop in for a good buy before interest rates increase. Also, if you have a vehicle with under 100,000 miles and are thinking about selling it, bring it down. Let us buy it. Visit us online for your next vehicle at Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Coshocton.com. The Warehouse Stakenstein is proud to sponsor tonight's Player of the Game. Tonight's Player of the Game will receive a gift certificate for a famous Warehouse cheeseburger and order of their legendary onion rings. This is courtesy of Warehouse Stakenstein in Roscoe Village. So it looks like it will be Philo's ball, and tri is going to be applying pressure. Full court pressure. Now they're going deep, and let's see if she can run it down. She does. Puts it up. No good. Rebound Harvey. Harvey quickly ahead to Hound. She's going to be fouled, and it'll be side out of bounds for Tri-Valley. Checking back in the lineup will be Olivia Demet for Philo. Triggered in with the ball, Krupa, right wing, it goes to Liddick. Liddick dumps it to Howe. Howe up fake, goes to the hoop, puts it up and in. Nice up fake, and Lexi Howe gets the basket. She has 16 points, full court pressure. Across the timeline to Demet, takes it down all the way, throws up a shot, and got bailed out as they call a foul on Howe. Blocking foul and heading to the free throw line will be Olivia Demet looking for her first points in the ball game. 20 point lead for Tri Valley here in the second period, 25 to 5. First throw on the way is right through. So Olivia Demet with her first point and wholesale substitutions for the Lady Electrics. Back to the free throw line. Throws on the way, no good, and Harvey rebounds for Tri-Valley, head to Howe. Howe pulls up, dumps the pass to Krupa. Krupa gets it back out to Harvey now. They work the perimeter. Liddick dumps it down low with McLaughlin, skips it out. There's Harvey for three. Ball's high, no good. Ball's tipped and comes up to Howe with a rebound. How about to Anna Krupa. Krupa throws it to Harvey. Harvey, and she's going to be called for over and back. Just lost her balance, and... Turns it over, number six for the Lady Scotties. So triggering in will be number 20, Kennedy Rinkus. Checking in will be Petey Moore for Tri-Valley. And she'll give J Janie McLaughlin a break. Now they get it in to Demet. Demet off the dribble, works left side, almost stolen away, and it is uh, tipped out by Philo, so it'll be a turnover. Good defensive play by number 10, Lexi Liddick. Slowly across the timeline is going to be Lexi Howe. Goes to Krupa, Krupa squares up, hands the basketball to Liddick. Liddick left wing, dumps it down low. Skip pass out and turning it over is going to be Tri-Valley as P.D. Moore throws it away. And that will be turnover number seven for the Lady Dogs. Demon across the timeline. Working down the left side. Now goes into the corner, just working the perimeter with the basketball's rose. Back out front to Rinkus. Ball is stolen away. Ahead of his pack is going to be Lexi Howe. And Howe, coast to coast, lays it in. Let's see how with 18 in the ballgame. Turnover number 10 for the Lady Electrics. Liddick defending uh, Demet. She's in trouble. Double teamed. And it's going to stay with um, Philo. It's, they'd had a good double team and tried to get rid of it. Actually bounced it off a player of Tri-Valley. So the Lady Electrics will have it. Trailing 27-6. to 6. 
Long three ball, back iron no good. Rebound nicely inside, missing the layup though. Grabbing the rebound and putting it back up and in will be Caitlin Rose. Missing that first shot was Shook. Now quickly the other way is Liddick to Howe. Harvey, left wing it goes to Moore. Moore, back out front to Harvey. Harvey, a couple dribbles, penetrates, skips it over in the corner to Liddick. She lets a shot go from the wing and hits a triple. So Liddick with a triple. She now, has, she now has three points in the ball game. Ball's tipped out of bounds and it'll go to Tri-Valley. Turnover number 11 for Philo. 30 to eight. 2.24 to play here in the opening half. Lexi Howe with the basketball. Hands it to Liddick, Liddick to Moore. Moore over the corner to Krupa. Krupa skip pass all the way across to Howe. Death quickness, she just goes in, dumps it all to Liddick in the corner. Back out front, ball's deflected and run down. They're gonna call over and back. So turnover for Tri-Valley will be their eighth. So triggering in will be Dodson. Zoe Dodson looking to get it in, does. With the basketball is going to be Kirsten Harper. Harper hands it off to Rinkus. Rinkus back out front, just working outside right now with the basketball. Hands it off, that ball is in trouble now, gets it out top to Harper. Harper dribbling, reverse dribble, trying to get inside. Good defense by Liddick. Now trying to get baseline, no way to where to go. And they get it back out front to Harper. Puts up the shot, no good. Howe tried to rebound it. It'll be out of bounds to Tri-Valley. 38 our score, 136 to play here in the opening half. Tri-Valley comfortably in front by 22 points. They get it into McLaughlin who checked back in to Krupa. Now to Howe. Philo trying to use full court pressure. Howe gets it across, picks up her dribble, but goes to Krupa, down into the corner to Liddick. Liddick dumps it down low to McLaughlin, back out to Krupa. She's going to let a three ball go, in and out, no good, and rebound goes today for Philo. They bring it across the timeline, 112 to play in the first half. Dribbles down inside is Harper, and we've got a whistle, and looks like she'll go at the line to shoot a couple. Bow is going to be on Janie McLaughlin. That will be her second. This will be Harper's first time to the line tonight. Looking for her first point. First throw on the way. Back iron no good. Checking in for Tri Valley. Getting in. And throws on the way again. That's good. So Harper with her first point. Full court pressure. They get it in with the basketball. J.C. Wallison. Skip pass over into the corner. All fumbled, but they recover it. Dump it down to Howe. Howe little move to the baseline. She gets the basket. Let's see Howe with 20. 32 to 9. Under a minute to play here in the first half. Guarded by Krupa, good solid defense. They skip it out front, trying to dribble out of traffic and get it down low is going to be number 34 Dodson. That's good, there's a shot from the wing, no good by Shook. Ball's rebounded by Howe and about is taken away and then missing the shot and blocked and it inside. Getting the basket's gonna be number 12. That would be Kirsten Harper. She now has three points. Across the time, almost stolen away, and there's going to be a foul as tried to get the steal. And that's team foul number seven, I believe. We'll wait and see. So, yes, there's only six. So, with 12 seconds to go, score 32 to 11. Tri Valley basketball. Let's see what they do. How slowly brings it across the timeline. Quickly breaks through, takes the shot at then knocks it down with two seconds to go. And that's going to be the end of the first half. So after one half of basketball, 
It's been all Tri-Valley here in the first half as they lead at 20, or leads at 34 to 11. We'll be back with the halftime report. This is High School Girls Tournament Basketball, WTNS, Coshocton. Coshocton Regional Medical Center is committed to prioritizing the safety of our patients. That promise of better care is reflected in our achievement of a LeapFrog Hospital Safety Grade A for safety excellence and a top 10% ranking for patient safety in the nation from health grades two years in a row. We strive to be the gold standard of care and have demonstrated that pledge to every patient with our commitment to patient safety. Coshocton Regional Medical Center, where care matters most. The Fisher Funeral Home in Warsaw is proud to sponsor this event as we support the families and individuals that have trusted us with their business through our four generations of service to the community. As the oldest family owned and operated funeral home in Coshocton County, we understand the importance of supporting our youth and fostering pride in our community. Please call us anytime at 740-824-3515 for any of your pre-need or at-need funeral counseling needs. You can also visit our website at fisherfuneralhome.com. The Fisher Funeral Home, serving others as we would like to be served since 1937. Claxon Custom Printing and Promotions is a proud supporter of high school athletics. Contact Casey Claxon or Judd Bone at klaxonprinting.com for printed t-shirts, embroidery, and branded promotional products for your booster club or business. We can also help your team set up an online fundraising store to sell your team apparel to fans across the country. Visit klaxonprinting.com or call 740-623-2145. In the nation, we know how it feels when a company doesn't treat you like a priority. You feel small. Or worst of all, like you're just a voice and a crowd. At Nationwide, we put members first. Join the nation. Nationwide is on your side. To join the nation, call Scott Boyer in Coshocton today at 740-622-2131. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. Availability and details vary. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. This is Jay Shepler, General Sales Manager at Jeff Drennan Ford. At Jeff Drennan Ford, we have the area's largest selection of pre-owned vehicles, including trucks. Our large inventory means you don't have to go out of town to find the vehicle you want. From expeditions and suburbans to fit the entire family to diesel trucks, Broncos, and fuel-efficient cars. We have the selection to help you find the perfect vehicle. Check out our inventory online at jeffdrennanford.com or shop locally at Jeff Drennan Ford, 801 South 2nd Street in Coshocton. Do you need health care without the wait? Muskingum Valley Health Center's Urgent Care is now open to serve all residents in Coshocton and surrounding counties. From feeling under the weather to a sprained ankle, MVHC Urgent Care is here for all of your urgent health care needs. Simply walk in and be seen seven days a week at the new MVHC Urgent Care located at 235 Kenwood Drive in Coshocton, directly across from Jeff Drennan Ford. MVHC Urgent Care. Healthcare without the wait. It's halftime, and Tri Valley is out in front of Philo 34 to 11 in this semifinal district tournament girls basketball game. It started out quickly for Tri Valley as they led at the end of the first break uh, 21 to 4, and they stretched their lead a bit to 34 11 at the halftime. Taking a look at individual scoring here in the first half. First for Philo, they had, uh, Caitlin Rose had four points. Kirsten Harper, three. Tegan Day had a basket for two. Olivia De Demont had a point for, and Aaliyah Bussey a point. That's the 11-point total for the Lady Electrics. For the Lady Scotties, it's been all Lexi Howe here this evening, and she's done it a variety of ways. She has 22 first-half points. She hit a pair of three balls. She has uh, six, or, uh, six two balls and a pair of free throws for that total of 22 points. Anna Krupa has added seven points, all coming in the first quarter on a triple and two two-point field goals. Rounding out the scoring, Lexi Liddick had three points and Mackenzie Harvey had two points. That's the 34-point total for the Lady Dogs. Now with the first half team numbers, here's Stephanie Snyder. Thanks, Ed. So we'll start with the visitors this evening. The Philo Lady Electrics have their total of 11 points. When it comes to three-pointers, they are 0 of 2. With two-point full goals, they are 3 of 20 for 15%. From the free throw line, they're 5 of 10 for 50%. They've pulled down eight rebounds so far and have 11 turnovers from the first half. 
Tri-Valley has their score of 34 points. When it comes to their three-point field goals, they're 4 of 13 for 31%. They're 10 of 16 with two-point field goals, that's 63%. From the free throw line, they're 2 of 4, 50%. They have 18 team rebounds so far in the game, and they have 11 turnovers from the first half. Well, I'll tell you what, you look at this game, you know, turnover's not that big of a difference, but it just feels like it's been a struggle for Philo to really get into any type of an offensive set. Yeah, and like we were talking about at one of the breaks, you know, the fact that they're trying to force it inside, you know, they're not really trying to dump it into any of their post players. The guards are really trying to, at times, kind of recklessly get to the hoop and trying to draw that foul. Like you said, that anticipation of those scoop shots and, like, figuring they're going to get clobbered. At times, I think, like I said, it was a little reckless maybe some offensive issues, offensive fouls. But Tri-Valley has fouled several times, and that's gotten them at least opportunities from the free throw line because, you know, obviously with their shooting, they're just having a hard time because of that defense that Tri-Valley is very well known for and their ability to trap the guards. Then they're taking away that reversal pass, and that's very frustrating to the Philo guards because they're just making it super difficult for them. And so offensively, like you said, Lexi Howe is doing a wonderful job. A few more people got involved in the first half with their shooting, and so they're working the ball very well. They're a very patient team. You know, they move the ball well. I'm always impressed with their passing. And so I look for that to continue. Coach Coffin's gotten a number of different athletes in this game, a lot of people coming off the bench, in and out of the game. Everyone's getting involved in the first half. You know, I think uh, the second half, I really, especially the first, uh, probably a good bit of the third quarter, I expect him to maybe work on some different things that he might see down the road. He's got a comfortable lead, but he won't take the, the pedal off, you know, the, the, the gas quite yet. But, uh, you know, I, I just think he, he, he likes the fact that the way his team's played, they probably turned it over a little more than normal, but still probably fairly happy. Yeah, a couple times that those were unforced turnovers, just some kind of reckless, careless, but not very much. You know, several of them were forced. But I agree. I think he's going to see what he can get into, you know, looking forward. You know, you take one game at a time, but, you know, looking at what they've done so far tonight, and he should be happy with what he's seen. And you can't help but think, okay, moving forward, what are some things we can work on and do to help prepare for the next step? All right, that's the halftime report. It's Tri-Valley out in front of Philo, 34-11. We'll be back with the second half. This is High School Girls Basketball, WTNS, Coshocton. Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabilitation of Coshocton provides personalized health care that makes a difference. If you've been suffering from neck or back pain, chiropractic care is a non-invasive treatment that can help you feel better. Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabilitation is proud to provide patients with advanced physical medicine. This type of rehabilitation is focused on enhancing and restoring the functional abilities of those suffering from physical impairments. To schedule your appointment, call Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabilitation at 291-8100 or stop by 112 Chestnut Street in Coshocton. At Village Motors, we take great pride in our product, and we have two new models in stock that we're very excited about. Hi, this is Deke Miller, and the full-size Ford Bronco has finally arrived. It is built Ford tough, and it just screams Bronco when you look at it. The Jeep Wrangler will now have a great competitor for years to come. It is the real deal, and you need to see it and drive it for yourself. Also, the Grand Cherokee Extended Length L model has arrived. The first third seat option for the Grand Cherokee, it combines luxury and off-road capability with the ability to carry seven passengers. Stop out soon to see the Bronco and the Grand Cherokee L at Village Motors in Millersburg. If you're looking for more insulation, then stop by MRV Siding Supply for top-rated Bywinco windows. Bywinco offers black windows carrying more argon gas, which gives you 30% more insulation value. Bywinco windows also have standard double strength, increasing noise reduction. That's MRV Siding Supply in Millersburg, Newark, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Call 800-524-7436. Get your siding supplies from the siding guys. MRV Siding Supply. Art Saylor here from Saylor Wealth Strategies. Most people assume they need a large amount of wealth to hire a financial advisor. Not true. I think outside the box to customize a plan for the individual. I also educate my clients along the way about how and why a plan can help and work for them. The key is to have a plan. If you'd like more information or to schedule a free consultation, call Saylor Wealth Strategies at 740-575-4782. 
We're here to help you achieve your financial goals. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research Incorporated, a broker-dealer member FINRA SIPC. Advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors Incorporated, a registered investment advisor. Sailor Wealth Strategies LLC and Cambridge are not affiliated. Start spring by beating the rush and stopping in to Jeff Drennan Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. This is General Sales Manager Craig Abner. We just received the hardest to find low mile vehicles between seventeen and twenty-three thousand dollars. From SUVs to sedans, we have them all in your price range, and they won't last long. We have the most desirable vehicles all in one location. So stop in for a good buy before interest rates increase. Also, if you have a vehicle with under 100,000 miles and are thinking about selling it, bring it down. Let us buy it. Visit us online for your next vehicle at Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Coshocton.com. We're back and we're already underway here. And Philo had the basketball coming out and just turned it over. So it'll be their 12th turnover. It now belongs to... The Lady Dogs, Lexi Howe with that monster first half, brings it across the timeline to Anna Krupa, down on the left wing to Harvey. Harvey dribbles back out front, now goes behind her back and gets to McLaughlin, penetrates back to Harvey. Harvey off the dribble, gets in the lanes, get past to Krupa, can't handle it. Turnover number nine for Tri-Valley. And I know Coach Kaufman is not happy with that. I could see him right now. Big lead, and he wants to continue with the intensity. So turnover results, and Philo has the basketball. Demet has it out front. Still dribbling down the lane, skips it over in the corner. There's a three ball from the wing, in and out, no good. Shot missed by Dodson, and quickly the other way, it goes to Howe from a three ball from the wing, and she knocks it down. Lexi Howe continues this onslaught, 37 to 11, 6.52 to play in the third period. Demet across the timeline, four. Philo works right side with the basketball to Zoe Dodson. Dodson, couple dribbles, hands it out. Basketball off to Harper. Harper just running the weave outside, trying to move and get it inside a little closer was Bussy, but gets it over to Harper. Now throws it clear across, and they turn it over. Has hit the sideline, so turnover number 13 for Philo. It'll be Tri-Valley basketball. Checking in the lineup again will be number 33. That's Tegan Day. And Lexi Howell will bring it across the timeline. Howe goes over to Krupa in the right corner. Now dumps it down to McLaughlin. Skip pass over. Wide open Harvey for three from the wing. And she knocks it down. Good bad ball movement. And Mackenzie Harvey with five points. 40 to 11 our score. 6.04 to play here in the third. With a basketball, Demet Pen penetrates. Now he's cut off and stolen away by McLaughlin. McLaughlin gets it ahead to Howe. Howe, a little scoop shot's good. Lexi Howe, 27 in the ball game, 42 to 11. 31 point lead now for Tri Valley. Philo penetrates, picks up the dribble. With a basketball, he's now still has the basketball. It's going to be Harper, and she almost turned it over. Now there's a three ball from the wing. That's no good, and but run down nicely by Harper. Harper spins, tries to get inside, goes back out front. There's a little shot from the wing. No good. Rebound, Howe. Howe ahead of the pack to Harvey. Harvey goes up, a little scoop shot right in. Mackenzie Harvey now with... Seven points, and we have a 30-second timeout, so we're going to keep it right here. Advanced Spinal Care and Rehabil Rehabilitation is now accepting new patients. They specialize in sports medicine as well as joint, low back, and neck pain. They believe in an integrated approach through massage, chiropractic, nutrition, and state-of-the-art therapies to achieve one goal for their patients to regain their health as quickly and as responsibly as possible. Well, continuing what we talked about during the halftime report, you know, the fact that Tri-Valley is going to be relentless with their defense. They have forced turnovers right away in the second half. Tri-Valley had that one, you know, first turnover, and I think, you know, getting their act together, there's forced and unforced turnovers. But, you know, they move the ball so well offensively and just they're getting so many opportunities because of the turnovers they're forcing from their good defense. All right, 44-11, to 11, our score. And Philo with the basketball. Demet slowly bringing it across the timeline. Goes left wing with the basketball. is going to be Dodson. Picks it up and she loses it. Harvey with a steal ahead to Lexi Howe. Howe stops and lays it in. 
Lexi Howe with another hoop, and it's now 46-11. It's a continuous clock situation for Tri-Valley. Philo with the basketball penetrates, skips it back out front to Demet. Bailey Demet just crosses over, now trying to get through, but can't. Just guarded too closely, now dumps it down low, almost stolen away. Yes, it is stolen away. Lexi Howe has it, now she'll... Bring it across the timeline to Harvey. Harvey back out to Howe. 428 to play in the in the third quarter. 46 to 11. Dry Valley comfortably in front. Gives the ball to Boffman, and we've got a foul on number 33. And picking up that personal foul is going to be Tegan Day. So it'll be Tri Valley ball on the sideline, right in front of the Tri Valley bench. They get in into Howe. Howe works right side. Boffman has it. Looking, looking now to Krupa. Krupa looking left wing to Harvey. Harvey looks for cutters. Now skip pass all the way across. And Boffman lets a three ball go. No good. Ball is rebounded by Philo. Picking up that rebound was Day. Gets to Demet. She gets it across the timeline. Works it to her sister. She drives to the side and she picks it up and gets it out front. Philo trying to penetrate inside. Ball's loose on the floor. So a ball remain with Philo. Kennedy Rinkus gets in. Boffman will check out and Littick back in for the Lady Dogs. Dumps it down into the corner. Philo with the basketball out front to goes to Demet. She goes all the way to the hoop. Little scoop shot's no good. Rebound is grabbed by Harvey and it was knocked out of her hands out of bounds, but it'll remain with the Lady Dogs. 2.55 to play here. Checking in will be P.D. Moore. And let's see how will take a break. That may, be, that may be the last we see of her tonight. 2.44 and moving here in the third quarter. Anna Krupa left wing to Liddick. Liddick takes a look at Cutters. Now takes a couple dribbles, gives it to McLaughlin. Off the dribble, tries to go to the hoop, puts it up, and she draws a two-shot foul. She was at the foul line earlier tonight. She's 0 of 2. The Warehouse Stakenstein is proud to sponsor tonight's Player of the Game. Tonight's Player of the Game will receive a gift certificate for famous Warehouse Cheeseburger and order of their legendary onion rings. This is courtesy of Warehouse Stakenstein in Roscoe Village. So Janie McLaughlin, first throw, no good. 0 of 3, I believe, from the stripe. Checking in now for Tri-Valley. is going to be Ashley Dinan, and Harvey will take a break. McLaughlin will try to hit, split the pair. And missed it. Rebound inside. Oh, wide open chance by Krupa, but she missed the rebound, and it comes down to Demet. Demet across the timeline, backs it out. Now long three ball, that's no good. Ball's rebounded by McLaughlin. She's a, oh, ahead of the pack to Liddick. Liddick goes up and missed a layup. Ball's almost stolen away as Demet rebounded it. And she comes out of there with it. Tries to throw it inside. Ball's loose on the floor. We've got a scramble and we've got a tie up. So with 118 and moving here in the third period, it's 46 to 11. And checking in will be Rollison, and McLaughlin will come out. 108 to play here. Clock moving in the third period. With a basketball, Demont. Out front, still dribbling. Looking, nothing open under a minute. Bow is deflected and stolen away by Rollison. Ahead it goes to Liddick. Liddick all the way across, just working the perimeter. Now just Tri-Valley taking time, just goes across. Ball is almost stolen away, but Liddick has it. Goes into the corner, more, more penetrates, get pass into the corner. There's going to be an air ball long. Shot missed by Dinan and comes down to Demet. Demet has it with 24 seconds to play here in the third period. Tri-Valley, all their subs in with the exception of Anna Krupa. They dump it down low, put the shot up, and getting the basket's going to be number 33. 
And that'd be Tegan Day. She has five points to lead the way, four seconds. Krupa loses control, and that's going to be the end of the third quarter. So after three quarters of play, the score here is Tri-Valley 46 and Philo 13. We'll be back for period number four. This is High School Girls Tournament Basketball on WTNS, Cushockton. Shopaholics and people who hate shopping have one thing in common. Neither likes to shop for insurance. At Grange Insurance, we get that. That's why we recommend buying through independent agents. Let Alberts and Lawrence do the shopping for you. They will look at a variety of insurance companies and recommend only the best ones. Companies like Grange, who offer great value and exceptional claim service. Call Alberts and Lawrence today at 740-622-0572. Products not available in all states. Coshocton Regional Medical Center is committed to prioritizing the safety of our patients. That promise of better care is reflected in our achievement of a LeapFrog Hospital Safety Grade A for safety excellence and a top 10% ranking for patient safety in the nation from health grades two years in a row. We strive to be the gold standard of care and have demonstrated that pledge to every patient with our commitment to patient safety. Coshocton Regional Medical Center, where care matters most. Tri Valley with the basketball. Harvey back in, has the ball stripped and stolen away, turned over, heading the other way, and that ball's deflected out of bounds by Tri Valley. So Harvey turns it over. That's the 10th Tri Valley turnover. 7.35 here in the fourth period, clock moving. To Demet on the left wing, down into the corner, back to Demet, guarded closely by Liddick. Skip pass all the way across, stolen away by Tri Valley's Dinan. She gets it up and gives it to Harvey. Harvey will walk it across the timeline. Stops, now gives to Liddick. Left wing, it goes to Dinan. Dinan dribbles out front to Liddick. Penetrates, picks up her dribble, back out front. Dinan dribbles, picks it up, and lazy pass is stolen away by Philo. Down it goes, and shot is missed. Followed up, no good. Ball on the deck. Philo keeps with it, and it's deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Philo. Couple shots, Rose missed a shot and also got an offensive rebound. 6.44 to play in the ball game. 46-13, Tri-Valley comfortably in front. Tri-Valley going to get another player into the game. That would be number 20, no, that'd be number 20, Addison Wilson. And Harvey will come out. Goes in, goes all the way out front. Ball's taken by Zoe Dotson. Dotson dribbles, picks up her dribble. Still gets it up, now gives the basketball up. And with the balls, Harper into the corner. There's a long three ball and right through for Philo. It's number 20 getting that shot is Kennedy Rinkus. 46-16, 30-point lead. Philo... Scoring the first five here. There's a bunch of new people coming in for Philo. The back door comes up, kicks it outside to Dinan. Dinan has it, so works right wing with the ball, Wilson. And now he goes to Liddick and she backs it out. Dribbles and ball st stripped and stolen away. Another turnover for Tri-Valley, they're 12. Heading all the way to the basket and stepping through and drawing the fouls. And P.D. Moore picks up the personal foul. And at the free throw line is going to be number 12, Kirsten Harper. So she's been on the line so far once tonight. She's one of two. Her first throw is right through. And that'll reset the clock at full 5.09, so under a... Continuous clock situation. Second free throw from Harper. She has four points in the ball game. Shot is up. That's good as well. So she now has five points. And Demet checks back in. With the basketball for Tri-Valley's Addison Wilson. To Liddick. Left wing it goes to Dinan. 
Dinan hands to Rollison. Picks up the dribble, goes out front to Liddick. Just running the weave out front, now in trouble. Gives it up, Rollison takes a step back shot, no good, ball batted around. Rebound comes down to number 32, Rose, and she hands it to, De to Demet. Demet off the dribble, goes to the hoop, throws up a shot, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. The Warehouse Stakenstein is proud to sponsor tonight's Player of the Game. Tonight's Player of the Game will receive a gift certificate for a famous Warehouse cheeseburger in order of their legendary onion rings. This is courtesy of Warehouse Stakenstein in Roscoe Village. So at the free throw line, Olivia Demet has two free throws. First one short and off to the right. Can't tell the number. The lady that just checked in. Demet will be to try to split the pair. Her throw is good. She does split the pair. She has two points in the ball game. Full court pressure. With the basketball, Liddick, right wing it goes to P.D. Moore. Moore out front. Wide open jumper from the wing. Getting the basket to drop in, I believe, is Liddick. It is. She gets the hoop. So she has five points in the ball game, makes it a 48-19 lead. Inside, Philo kicks it out. There's a three ball from the wing. The shot is going to be short by Winland. Rebound comes down to Rollison. Rollison rebounds it, hands the basketball off. Dribbling it across the timeline is number 20, Wilson, and she traveled. Turnover number 13. And Coach Kaufman wants to take a full timeout, so we'll break away and be back. This is High School Girls Basketball in WTNS, Coshocton. It's time to be thinking about those concrete projects. Coshocton Materials offers ready-mix concrete, precast blocks, and a variety of mason and concrete products. Located on County Road 621 in Coshocton, call today for prices and delivery options at 740-722-9015. That's 740-722-9015. Yes, I think Coach Kaufman wanted to just take a little break and kind of reset things. They had a couple of those turnovers, just, just making sure everybody feels comfortable offensively moving the ball and continuing to work hard in this game. If you have a run-in with a deer, make sure you get your vehicle fixed the right way. Brew Hearts Body Shop will give you quality, attention to detail, and satisfaction you deserve when getting your vehicle fixed. Give Brew Hearts Body Shop a call at 740-622-0121 or stop by 622 Main Street in Coshocton. And both teams have hit the floor. There's 402 to play in the ballgame. Tri-Valley comfortably in front, 48 to 19. Philo has the basketball. And bringing it across the timeline will be Bussy. Bussy dribbling out front, goes left wing with the ball now is going to be Winland. Winland picks up her dribble, now tries to get it to the post. There's a scramble, and we've got a tie up. Jump ball, it'll remain with Philo. Under four to play here. Philo looking to move on to the district finals with a win here this evening. They get the basketball, Philo gets it in. Just working the perimeter, now trying to dump it down the low boast area. Puts the shot up, is blocked by Rollison. And she comes out of there with a basketball. Shot was missed by number 23, Wolf. And on the other way down and going the line will be Tri-Valley. Nice job of taking it hard to the hoop. And that'll be Ashley Dinan with an opportunity to shoot a pair. This will be her first trip to the line tonight. First throw and a back iron, no good. She tried to split the pair with this throw and missed it. A nice rebound by P.D. Moore. Moore gets it. They get outside, now working the perimeter. Get the high pick, gives it off. Down inside, there's going to be a three ball from the wing. Air ball long by P.D. Moore and rebound comes down to D Dinan quickly the other way, dumps it down inside, missing the layup is going to be number 23 for, would be Bree Wolf missed the layup and rebound to Rollison and the ball goes over to Tri-Valley on the foul. 
Dry Valley brings it across. Liddick turns it over, throws it away. Philo heading the other way quickly. Puts the shot up and in. Getting that basket's going to be Leah Bussey. She has three points in the ball game. Makes it now 48-21. 2.50 to play in the ball game. Yeah, moving it down the corner. Trying to dump it down low. Stolen away again. Here comes Philo. Strong to the hoop. Puts a shot up in and she's fouled. And getting that basket is going to be Tegan Day. She has six points in the ball game. Makes it 48-23. Two of those shots came from the free throw line earlier. She's two of two already tonight. And that's going to be no good. And rebound is grabbed by Tri-Valley. Lady Dogs get it out. Liddick goes way down the corner, picks it up. Now to trouble, gives the basketball off, skips it into the corner. Liddick lets the three ball go, and she buries it. Lexi Liddick with eight points in the ball game off the bench, 51-23. They dump it down low inside, a little spin move. Shot is missed, down close by Wolf, and rebound comes down to... Tri Valley grabbing that rebound was Liddick and headed pack it goes to Moore. Moore's cut off back out front, just working the perimeter. Liddick's gonna let another triple go. This time she missed it, but got her own rebound. Liddick runs it down in this right sideline. Now it goes over. There's gonna be a three ball from the wing and good. <laughs> Ashley Dinan knocks down the triple, makes it 54 23, 142 to play in the ball game. Or the basketball out front. Philo and they turn it over as not able to handle it was Tegan Day. So Tri Valley has it. 54 23, 136 to play. Riddick is out and Tri Valley getting some people in. Dumps it down low. Well, the basketball down that low is Wilson, now just working the perimeter. Dinan has it out front, goes right wing. Ball's loose on the floor and turning it over. And heading the other way is going to be Philo stepping through, missing that shot is going to be Harper. And got her own rebound, dribbles it back outside. Now she's tied up, but gets it out. Harper has it, skip pass over in the corner, back out front. Trying to penetrate, throwing up a shot. It's no good by Rinkus. And the rebound comes down to P.D. Moore. Gets it over into the corner, back out to Dinan. She's going to be fouled. And that'll be side out of bounds. 54-23 with 48 seconds to play here. And Tri-Valley will be moving on to Saturday afternoon's district final against an opponent to be determined. Tri Valley with the basketball, lost control, and coming up with the ball and heading the other way and putting the shot up. It's blocked. The rebound comes down to Tri Valley, and they lose it again. Rollison lost it, got the rebound, but turned it over. Gets the basketball to Dinan. Dinan backs it out with 30 seconds. Gets to P.D. Moore, back to Dinan. Right side to Rollison. They're dribbling it out from that. That's Clara Goss, excuse me. Skip pass out. Goss has it top of the circle. Now just working the perimeter. Running clock down to 10 seconds. And P.D. Moore just puts it underneath her arm. They're just going to let this clock run out. And Tri Valley is moving on as they defeat Philo here this evening by a score of 54 to 23. We'll be back and tell you about it. This is High School Girls Tournament Basketball in WTNS, Coshocton. Valley Cheese would like to announce their new winter hours. They're open Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, Saturday, 9 to 4, and closed on Sundays. Tours are still available, but only by appointment. So call 740-545-6002. At Pearl Valley Cheese, they've been making quality cheese since 1928, including their award-winning Swiss cheese, along with Colby, Marble, Pepper Jack, Farmers, Jumping Jack, and Lacey Baby Swiss. For the best cheese, Visit Pearl Valley Cheese, located on State Route 93 in Pearl.
This is Jay Shepler, General Sales Manager at Jeff Drennan Ford. At Jeff Drennan Ford, we have the area's largest selection of pre-owned vehicles, including trucks. Our large inventory means you don't have to go out of town to find the vehicle you want. From expeditions and suburbans to fit the entire family to diesel trucks, Broncos, and fuel-efficient cars. We have the selection to help you find the perfect vehicle. Check out our inventory online at jeffdrennanford.com or shop locally at Jeff Drennan Ford, 801 South 2nd Street in Coshocton. Domino's now has a new deal to help feed your entire family. Take advantage of two large, two-topping pizzas for only $10.99 each, carry-out or delivery. That's two large pizzas with two toppings each delivered to your door for only $10.99 each. Give us a call today in Coshocton at 622-9345 or in Newcomerstown at 498-4131 and get two large, two-topping pizzas for $10.99 each, only at Domino's. The... McDonald's is food you buckle in with your seatbelt deal. And there's no reason not to take that extra precaution. Because a meal from McDonald's is not just a meal. It's often your most precious cargo. Now get a free sausage McMuffin with egg when you download the McDonald's mobile app. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Free sausage McMuffin with egg valid one time through 4-3-2022 at participating McDonald's. Download and registration required. If you own a farm... You know that a one-size-fits-all insurance policy isn't a smart way to do business. I'm John Ionello, your American National Insurance Agent in Coshocton, Holmes, and surrounding counties. American National can provide you with a flexible farm package that allows you to customize a policy to match your individual needs. Call me at 740-295-9460. Because while you know your business, we know how to help insure it. This is Jamie from the Coshocton Coffee Connection. Did you know that we serve breakfast sandwiches all day, every day? Our made-to-order breakfast sandwiches include a fresh egg, melted cheese, and your choice of biscuit, bagel, croissant, or my favorite, onion flatbread. Next, choose from sausage or locally purchased bacon. Enjoy that same bacon for lunch on our BLTs, grilled cheese, and turkey bacon clubs. Pair any of our sandwiches with a hot made fresh daily bowl of soup. Let us complete your order by making you a specialty coffee or tea. Stop by and see us at the Coshocton Coffee Connection. Valley here this evening as the Lady Dogs defeat the Philo Lady Electrics by a score of 54 to 23. Tri Valley jumped out early. They led 21 to 4 at the end of the first break. It was 34 11 at halftime, 46 13 after three, and they win it here this evening, 54 to 23. Taking a look at individual scoring here in the ball game for uh, for uh, Philo, they were led by Tegan Day, who had six points in the ball game. Kirsten Harper had five, Caitlin Rose four, Aaliyah Bussey had three, Kennedy Rinkus had three. Uh, well, getting one basket or two free throws was Olivia DeMent. That is the 23-point total for Philo. For Tri-Valley, a big night tonight for Lexi Howe. Howe, a monster game, only played two and a half quarters, had 29 big points in the ball game. She had three triples in the ball game, had eight two-point field goals and a couple free throws for that 29-point total on the evening. And a, a list, second was Lexi Liddick off the bench. She had eight points on two three-point field goals and a basket. Anna Krupa and Mackenzie Harvey had seven points apiece. Ashley Dynan had three. That's the 54-point total for the Lady Dogs. Now with the final team numbers, here's Stephanie Snyder. Thanks, Dad. We'll start with the visitors. Philo Lady Electrics had their total score of 23 points tonight. They are one of eight when it came to three-point field goals for 13%. With two-point field goals, they were seven of 34. And when it came to their free throws, they were eight of 15 for 53%. When it came down to their team rebounds, they pulled down 18. They had 20 total turnovers over the course of the game. Tri-Valley had their total score of 54 points. When it came to their three-point field goals, they were 35%, 7 of 20. With two-point field goals, they were 15 of 25 for 60%. With their free throws, they were 2 of 8 for 25%. They had a total 29 team rebounds and 17 turnovers. Well, I'll tell you what, just another dominating performance by the Lady Dogs. Uh, up next, uh, as we're waiting to hear uh, who they'll play and, and, and or where they'll play, so... That could be interesting as well as we move deeper into the tournament. But be that as it may, they have moved on into the um, district finals and they're awaiting the outcome 
of the game that uh, the, between Zanesville and, and, the, uh, the, and the other opponent. Yeah, and Tri-Valley, like you said, very much dominating the game. Lexi Howe really helped them get off to a great quick start tonight. Defensively, you know, holding uh, – Philo to a, let's see, at the half they had 11 points. Total score was 23 by the end of the game. And so I think that speaks volumes about how their work ethic defensively, getting up in those passing lanes, trying to take away the reversal, and that caused Philo a lot of fits tonight, a lot of frustration. And so Philo did have a little bit of a run there late in the game, being able to turn uh, their some of their um, steals into buckets. You know, Tri-Valley had those 17 turnovers. I mean, there's always things you can work on to improve. Moving forward, whoever they are going to face later this week, um, I'm sure they'll be ready for a couple nights of practice. But it was nice to see so many girls get involved for Tri-Valley tonight, a lot of different people scoring. But a monster night for Lexi Howe offensively and defensively. You know, and I, and I agree. And, you know, that, that game, uh, for those, uh, it'll be on at 1 o'clock at a site still to be determined. And uh, look forward to – we'll be covering that on WTNS. That game will be uh, at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Last order of business for us here this evening is going to be the uh, Warehouse Stakenstein uh, player of the game, and really not much doubt tonight. It's going to be Lexi Howe with that monster 29-point performance plus everything else that she was able to accomplish on there. She had 10 rebounds. 10 rebounds as well, so a big night for her. She'll be the recipient of a gift certificate from the Warehouse Stakenstein, good for a famous Warehouse cheeseburger, order of their legendary onion rings, and it is courtesy of Warehouse Stakenstein in Roscoe Village. People to thank tonight. Fred Williams driving down here along with Mark Clark doing the video work here. Want to thank uh, Stephanie Snyder uh, helping me out again here this evening. Trevor Griffith back at WTNS. I'm Steve Corys. Once again, the final score here tonight is Tri-Valley moving on as they defeat Philo by a score of 54-23. to Have a nice night, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this WTNS Sports Broadcast. Audio CDs of this broadcast are available by calling WTNS Radio at 740-622-1560. WTNS Kishatin. We are the sports voice of East Central Ohio.